Ladies and gentlemen, you know is about to become the next wizard king. Cap. No, we're serious. Asta's dream is in the mud, as the magic knights literally acknowledge you know for having the abilities of a wizard king. <laughs> Asta cannot catch a break, as time and time again, his achievements are downplayed due to the corruption, whilst you know as a royal is glorified. I mean, look no further than chapter 332 when Fuego and Nozel even admitted he got shafted by not being a grand magic knight like you know. The battle for the wizard king title is full steam ahead, as you know has surpassed everything Asta has ever done within two chapters. I'm getting cooked. <laughs> Chapter 356 has proved that Yuno has the power to stop time and is fighting against Lucius as an equal. Yuno has evolved beyond a human. Well, there's the fact that he literally isn't one and has two souls, but him manipulating space and saving the entire Clover Kingdom in the same way Julius once did proves his merit. That's right, akin to the former Wizard King's Krona Anastasis, Yuno saved the Clover Kingdom's magic knights from being being annihilated before even putting up a fight, making his new power more than equal to Asta, if not way stronger. So when we look back at chapter 336, when the 15 month time skip had occurred already, we witnessed Yuno's development, and Ramelek claimed that Yuno destroyed all devils that are high ranked instantly, and he has never seen a human grow so powerful in such a short span of time. Heck, even Yami, the chat of all chads, acknowledge you know in chapter 355. Keep in mind, a high rank means devils equivalent to Zagrid in the previous arc. So if we scale you know's current power to the past, the fight would go like this. Seconds late. <laughs> In fact, Lucius sees Juno as such a big problem that out of the tens of thousands of future he has seen, there's only one future where they have an advantage. That key being Juno having a singularity moment with his two grimoire. What does that mean ABD you may ask? Well Lucius foresaw that Juno would unlock a new power to stop time. That's why he instantly nuts when he sees the singularity come true and the future where they have an advantage is happening. In comparison, Asta may have grown by unlocking perfect devil union against Lucifero, but it was in the Hino country where he truly became a monster by becoming 100 times stronger with Zetan, just like how Yuno has done so according to Andremelet. In chapter 345, Asta had self-doubt over his own capabilities, believing that he didn't have what it takes to become the Wizard King. He believed that if Yuno was the one who faced Lucius, Sister Lily and everybody else would have been fine. This turns out that it may have been true, as Asta even admitted to himself that the biggest fear he had was his own weakness. However, he slashed that away and destroyed it, being more confident than ever. Ever. Meanwhile, in parallel, Yuno had a similar struggle. We saw in chapter 336 that after Asta's supposed death, he remembered the moment he was made a Grand Magic Knight, where Asta congratulated him. Yuno believed that Asta was the one that was far ahead of him, thus making it his mission to surpass Asta and in his place kill Lucius. These parallels all lead to the final fight of Black Clover. Yes, Bo's deep prediction magic bruh. Congratulations. Once Lucius is defeated and the world is saved, because let's be honest that's definitely going to happen, Adi, you're so smart. The theme of Asta and Yuno's rivalry will continue on. They both believe that the other person is stronger than themselves. The people wouldn't be able to decide either because both their merits for the Wizard King role also parallel. For example, Asta saving the kingdom from the ancient demon and Yuno saving them from Lucius. Or let's say Asta being seen as a leader that inspires others to surpass their limits just like Yuno does with his win to make everyone fly with him. Therefore, the final fight will be between the two rivals to determine who's the strongest in front of every single kingdom. Don't believe me? 
Well, the fact that Yuno's own mother in chapter 381 states to Yuno that she loves him and can't believe he's alive, he responds that he won't return to the Spade Kingdom because he made a vow to Asta that they are rivals and will fight for the position of Wizard King, which is a similar notion repeated once again in chapter 356 where Yuno doesn't even acknowledge Lucius as his rival when it's declared. He believes it's Asta. The fact that Tabata himself admitted that his final arc is about who is the ultimate wizard king and Lucius, Asta, Yuno are fighting for that title is proof enough. Asta vs Yuno is going to happen since Lucius won't be around at the end. As a result, their rivalry continues with Asta gaining mastery of Zetan, whilst Yuno's new power enables him to help the NPCs. Who? This dude has surpassed Ryl's record of becoming the youngest captain and Grand Magic Knight. In fact, Asta or Yuno will be the youngest wizard king ever. He witnesses NPCs in action, trying to fight the angels. And, well, it goes about as well as you'd expect. Absolutely useless. The further magic knights keep on proving how useless they are, as their magic can't do anything. Yeah, I mean, we already know that the captains are nothing when compared to the seven Ryuzen, but this proves even more how irrelevant they are. They could only sit and watch Lucius's overwhelming power, yet Yuno can fight him one on one. Asta and Yuno are so strong in the power scaling now that all the magic knight captains and NPCs PCs combined wouldn't be able to beat them, which leads to Klaus acknowledging Juno in the same way he did to Asta when he defeated the ancient demon, and you know became his hype man saying, "Oh my God, that's my goat, that's why he's the goat." But seriously, the captains and NPCs being a hype man is the only thing these knights are useful for nowadays. Hey yo, what the? No, no. He's got a point. However, they don't give up. Even against unstoppable opponents, even when it's reckless, and despite being peasants, going back to the message we foresaw against Majucula that humans never give up and it's all about love and surpassing your limits, they keep fighting. And wait, it works? works? Well, it turns out that Yuno is lending his magic power to all the knights, using Bell's new evolved power in combination with Mana Zone and Yuno's star magic. This new spell called Neverland allows him to control the space-time within a certain area, where the enemies are weakened whereas his allies are made stronger. This is already one of the most busted spells in the entire series, and the power is a clear nod to Peter Pan. In Peter Pan, the Neverland time flows in a strange, ambiguous way, much like in this chapter, and Tinkerbell in this situation as well, Bell. This spell is a combination of star and wind magic, a singularity between his two souls and grimoire Lucius had mentioned in chapter 336. A singularity refers to a place in the universe where our laws of physics simply break down. Now you may argue in the comment section right now, oh my god, Black Clover is never dodging those Disney allegations am I right? Huh? Well, yeah. Disney Clover has been around for a while though. Did you know Grey's entire backstory is Cinderella? Vanessa's entire story is Rapunzel? Noelle is the ugly duckling? Charmy is Little Red Riding Hood? Kahono is the Little Mermaid? Charlotte is Sleeping Beauty? Lumiere and Nero are the Happy Prince? Oh my god, bro. Oh, yep. Your mind is probably blown right now realizing that, but with that bit of trivia, why not smash the notification bell for the channel and like the video since you will never look at Black Clover series the same again. Wait, no way, what? Now due to the singularity, this is why Lucius stated he must kill Yuno, as even Lucius's aging time magic can't do anything to him because he's completely stopped time within his vicinity. In our universe, stars are related to space, time, and even gravity. So it's possible that Tabata has made it so Yuno's magic is able to interfere with these three laws. We saw him fighting Lucifero, and his magic was passively countering him. We witnessed Yuno manipulate space with conjunction, where he can literally teleport, effectively punching a hole within space, and finally he can manipulate time with the Neverland spell. Did you know that this 
this spell was actually foreshadowed all the way back in chapter 20 when Yuno first received the wind spirit bell, where bell slowed down time and stopped it. Now obviously it wasn't usable on command back then as Yuno hadn't discovered who he truly was. Bell grew as a spirit with him as time went on, as their emotions connected. Just as Asta had to connect his goal and emotions with his brother Lieber to unlock True Devil Union, Yuno evolved in the fight against Zenon, where he started to find his true self, which Bell commented on, feeling closer to Yuno than ever before. We have seen that throughout the series. As Yuno has grown and gotten stronger, Bell has too, and her appearance mirrors that. The chapter shows her looking like this. Perhaps I treated you too harshly. We all thought she was just an annoying little fairy, but look at her now. You gonna make me act up. Anyway, the reason Belle specifically wasn't able to activate this Neverland spell is because if we go down the Peter Pan route we mentioned, the entrance to Neverland is a star. This would explain how she chose Yuno. As Julius mentioned, she instinctively sensed this power within him. So when they combined, they could reach levels of power never achieved before. Thus, Lucius acknowledges that Yuno's power is a direct counter to his own and he hates it. This would mean that Yuno's power counters Lucius even more than Aster's did. Aster's anti-magic power is incredibly strong but he could compensate with physical attacks. But that isn't the case with Yuno. Lucius is going to be forced to use his other types of magic such as gravity that he inherited from Lucifero by consuming his heart. On top of that, he has powered up even more since his first bout with Aster. That's why Lucius declares Yuno his rival instead of him. But before we get ahead of ourselves thinking Yuno's going to get the dub, he isn't the main protagonist of this shonen manga. What's going to happen is that Aster will appear in front of Yuno to save him, just like he did when Yuno was about to be killed by Mars. We may even see a parallel of when the Magic Knight captains came to protect Aster, but this this time it will be the seven reusing as they're actually useful. That one there was a violation. The clash between Asta, Yuno and Lucius is actually similar to one we've seen before, being none other than Ichigo and Aizen. Tabata has mentioned before that Bleach was his inspiration behind Black Clover, which is why we can map out similarities between the antagonists of both these series. Aizen, despite being a genius and a broken Shinigami, Gami never even used his Bankai against Ichigo, the threat that he himself identified long ago. This is because Aizen's nature caused him to be extremely lonely, with no rival to match up to his standards. Thus, he wanted someone to stand up to him, hoping that he would be defeated. In the same manner, Lucius is so powerful beyond anyone's imagination that nobody could challenge his ideals, especially since he can see every future. You know states that time doesn't flow when the spell is active and we witness that it scales so large that the entirety of the noble realm is covered which scales to this. It's ridiculous. He's so OP. This would explain why Yuno has leveled up so fast like a hyperbolic time chamber that we see in Dragon Ball Z. What's stopping Yuno from activating this spell and training forever? As outside the zone time would flow normally but inside it he can train for as long as it's needed to reduce the gap between himself and Lucius. Thus explaining why Indremelex says he has never seen a human grow so fast in a short span of time. The future in which the magic knights have an advantage is when Asta and Yuno achieve their singularities and work together, the floor of the system and his rival. In fact Lucius seems elated when Yuno defies him, hinting that he actually wanted them to grow strong enough to take him down. And since Tabata is heavily inspired from Bleach, I mean, just look at the designs, the throne, the twist, Lucius and Aizen are pretty similar. Which brings up an idea from our community. For example, Lucius could be involved in Yuno's birth. Using his soul magic, Lucius could have put the soul of Licht and Tetya's son in the body of Yuno on purpose. Think about it. 
Lucius knew he was the Spade Kingdom prince where the Zocratis family originate from. Just like how Aizen knew of Ichigo's unique soul and manipulated everything. This would tell us why Yuno fighting alongside Asta humors him so much as he is experiencing something never before. As the knowledge of the future can make everything boring and a burden and even lonely. But there is more bad news for Yuno fans as he may in fact die. In in 2021, one of Tabata's editors claimed that Yuna was planned to die as early as chapter 7 of the story. But this decision was ultimately cancelled, perhaps to save the moment for the climax of the story like now, where Lucius's plan was to make Yuno a ultimate paladin for Asta to defeat and lose against. Now to enjoy more peak fiction, learn about Boruto vs Kawaki's entire lives being switched around. We cover every memory that has been changed to understand the story. Click it on your screen right now, bye bye.